What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my continuing coverage of the 2019 Dallas International Film Festival. I'm Chase Lee, and hey, listen, I always love doing these festivals, you know, especially smaller ones like the Dallas one, because you, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, a lot of these films, most of you have never heard of, I've never even heard of. So if it's a good movie, you know, hopefully, I can um, broadcast it to you guys and let you guys know that it's out there, available if you uh, care to see it. So I have 11 films lined up for you guys, and these, the this is the fourth film that I've seen, and definitely going to be the longest one that I see at the film festival, and it's called A Fortunate Man. And this one comes from uh, uh, Denmark, it, so yes, it is in Danish. Uh, and it is directed by, I believe it's Bill August, or it might be Billy August. Uh, I don't know if the, the E is silent. And it stars uh, Esben uh, Smed as a, a 19th century um, son of a clergyman. And so he has this idea of, uh, you know, water transportation and using wind as fuel and all this stuff. Some pretty uh, groundbreaking stuff for the early 19th century. So he goes to Copenhagen and he meets up. Uh, or, you know, he stumbles across a rich family, strikes relationships with people, tries to get funding for his projects, and then, you know, whether he does it or not is kind of the problem with the film. Um, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, this is a, a, a really interesting movie. So, okay, so to start off at the very, very beginning, I, I, I knew nothing about this movie going into it. This was completely blind to me. And this movie is a monster. It is two hours and 42 minutes. Now, there are several reactions that you're always going to walk out of with a very, very long film. It was either too long and therefore boring or uninteresting to watch. It was an epic three-hour movie and it didn't even feel like that long. Or it was just kind of like so-so and you kind of just wanted it to end. I typically will have those three reactions to very, very long movies because it's very rare for a movie of this runtime to go smoothly without any hitches. I will say that the first two hours and 10 minutes were fantastic. It reminded me of films like The English Patient where it was just just this sweeping, tremendous, romantic epic. I was like, wow, the acting's on point. I feel like these relationships are genuine. Some really great, um, uh, you know, uh, line deliveries, some really great dialogue. It had some really great messages about uh, the environment, which is su stuff we face nowadays. Um, so the romance story was just kind of like um, the outer shell of like what the actual theme was. You had great production design, and you still do even with the... I'll get to that in just a second. Great production design. Really nice looking cinematography. It's just... I was... I, I thought I was in the presence of greatness. Like I was in the presence of something great. Where I was going to walk out of that theater and go, Wow, that was the best thing I've seen so far. So here is what happens. Without spoiling anything, the last 30 minutes of this movie is such a huge turnoff and a severe character pivot that is unearned and quite shocking that it derailed my entire experience at the drop of a hat. Now, without spoiling anything, because I don't want to ruin this for you guys if you want to see it. It is a very long movie, so you will invest a lot of your time. I'm curious to see how people react to the pivot. But it, it, it is quite appalling that this character pivot was so abrupt and came out of nowhere that if you put this in the editing room and you seriously sat there and said, yeah. Going from this to this was a great transition. I, I don't know. I, I can't help you. So I guess to kind of break it down, without, I mean, it's going to be really hard to talk about. So throughout the entire movie, right, he, he joins in with this family. 
he maybe falls in love with one of the the daughters of this rich um, guy who runs the community for like engineering and could fund his project. And you see that he's an ambitious dude and like he wants to just change the world and you know he's he's doing that. He's in the process of doing that. And hey, he falls in love on top of that. That sounds fantastic. And you know, at the beginning of the film, he has a father that's not really accepting of his choices because he's supposed to be a clergyman, but he de- he, he goes off the, the path and he wants to do something in engineering. I'm like, wow, he's changing his life for the better. This is fantastic. Then, let's just say he calls off an uncertain engagement. If you, you heard that word, then good for you. He calls that off to, let's just say, someone in the rich family. And then after that, he proceeds to still try to fund his project while pursuing other women and starting other families. Um, okay, so if you're going to go down that route, why didn't you lay any groundwork for this character to build up to that specific point to where if you wanted to do that shift, it was a, a successful tonal transition? Because with this pivot, it felt like this guy was the scum of the earth out of nowhere. And the music uh, accompanying this scene of him, you know, maybe committing, uh, you know, some cheating going on. It almost felt like a horror film or like, you know, this really stealthy action film. I was like, this is really confusing. Like, I thought this guy was supposed to be like a really you know, complex main character to follow. Not perfect, but complex. A human being, if you will. But then we get to a point where you make it just seem like he's he's scum and he he's just messing up his life for the sake of it. And then when you get to the, the end of the film, they have the whole theme of like, you know, people that were brought up in rough childhoods, like sometimes they never get out of that, you know... Um, mindset and they become you know their fathers or bad people or whatever i get that i get your theme i get what you were going for but that was not built up this came out of nowhere i was shocked i rarely have like a mouth jaw-dropping moment i could not believe what i was watching in terms of the the shift i was like this guy is just throwing everything away for the sake of it no, 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 it's, you know, because he was eventually going to become his father. I never saw any sign of that. At the beginning of the movie, we have a character that goes, Dad, I want to do something different. Dad slaps him. Okay, they have a bad relationship. I get that. But from that point on, he is diverging from his family. He doesn't want to speak to them. He wants to do his own thing. He wants to become his own successful um being be successful in his career all that stuff i'm like wow he's changing his life for the better and then he just randomly becomes like this like villain of the film and i'm like what this wasn't built up at all so there was no gradual like stepping stones to this point because this is a very crucial point in this story and they just like they show it on screen and they we were just willing to accept no i'm not going to accept it there are specific Measures to take when you're doing something that severe with your story or your character. You have to lay groundwork. You have to build up to it. And then I would have accepted it because then I would have looked at it and been like, uh, hey, listen, this is a guy who let pride get in his way. And he really did not. He was very close minded. He did not see around the tunnel. He was very tunnel tunnel visioned um, with his project. And he, he pushed everyone out of his life. I would have accepted that. But you can't give me two hours and 15 minutes of something else, switch to something else in the last 30, put your themes at the very end and be like, yep, we'll just accept it. No, that's not how it's done. And it's so unfortunate, ironically. There you go, there's your joke. It is so unfortunate for this movie because everything about it is fantastic. I love the the time and the care that the director put into this film and made us really care about these relationships that you wouldn't think would work 
but he makes it work because he he spends a lot of time on it. He develops it just really just so smoothly, and he gets these performances out of these actors that are just so genuine, so heartfelt. I felt the determination from this guy. I felt the love from this guy when he went after the uh, specific girl in the family. Everyone else was either, you know, comic relief or really great dramatic support for his character, you know, motivation for his character. His brother had some great scenes with him, but then... And then his whole character switched. With no rhyme or reason, it just happens. That's not how... It works, and I, I just, I don't know. So I, I'm at this like weird um, crossroads where the production design is flawless, it's exquisite, the acting is really great, the the management of conducting this three hour like orchestra for the most part is pretty well ha- handled uh, in editing and directing. And the story for the first 75% of it is great. It just, it all falls apart. And when you see what I'm talking about, please let me know down below if it worked for you. I'm curious. But for me, it did not. And so I was going to give this like a B plus, A minus. Like I was going to go super high up there. But this derailed it so much because it went on for 30 extra minutes. And the writing uh, for certain characters just kind of appear out of nowhere, so to speak. So I'm going to give it a B minus. So there's a lot of great to be had. It is very hard to do three hour, nearly three hour epic movies like this, especially that aren't like Lord of the Rings or, you know, something of uh, action. This is a very quiet drama. And it just uh, does a huge misstep towards the end. And I'm just really, really disappointed. But I'll give it a B minus because... There's a lot of greatness to this to where it does outweigh that bad uh, last quarter of the film. So I can't really say it's a complete failure, but definitely um, disappointing for sure. So B minus for me for a fortunate man. Let me know down below what you thought of this film. I know it's based on a book. Let me know if it worked in the book, if it is the same pivot in the book. Who knows? I'm I'm just uh, reviewing uh, what I see and telling you guys. So Let me know down below what you thought of a fortunate man. So that will do it for this review, guys. Uh, I'm Chase Lee, and uh, I guess tune in next time for my continuing coverage of the 2019 Dallas International Film Festival. I will see you guys later.